send me a link. What the fuck is this? South American Vanilla Fortress supporter? I've never heard of that event in my life. What the hell is this? South American Van- What? Something right here. Why am I getting this? Corruption is a form of dishonesty or a criminal offense that is undertaken by a person or an organization that is entrusted with a position of authority in order to acquire illicit benefits or abuse power for one's personal gain. Two years ago, I had no idea that this could touch the world of Team Fortress 2 and leave such a big impact on the future communication and trust between Valve and the TF2 community. In this video, we will take a deep dive to better understand the origins and consequences of the corruption of the South American Team Fortress 2 community from 2015 to 2019. In November 2015, a South American player Pepito was accused and later convicted of orchestrating and participating in distributed denial of service attacks, also known as DDoS attacks against the players and servers that participated in the official Brazilian Team Fortress 2 Federation matches at the time, receiving a ban of one year and four months from the league. He was punished from participating in any of the league's events for one year and four months for the following. 12 months for being an accomplice of two DDoS raids, 3 months for being an accomplice of a Smurf account, 1 month for starting the tournament with the Smurf account rostered in his team. Later on in 2016, Pepito was accused of another DDoS attack, for which he pleaded guilty in an attempt to reduce his sentence, which wasn't fruitful, due to it being a trap set by the league's administration team and another one year and four months were added to his already existing ban, resulting in a total of three years and eight months of punishment. Creation of Vanilla Fortress In late 2018, during the last days of the Brazilian league Rapelaria, Pepito alongside Flawless decided to create a league called Vanilla Fortress, its beginnings were aimed to organize a 6v6 season and whose prizes were in-game medals and Team Fortress 2 keys from a prize pool. Rigging and Unfair Divisions During the first season of Vanilla Fortress, Pepito and Flawless were accused of rigging the lowest division of the league, Open, for them to claim the 10-man co-keys that made the winning prize of that division. The way they did the rigging was by allowing members of the league staff, themselves included, to join an open team despite the potential and also very obvious skill gap between the players. Their team, Dedonosiu Gritaria, joined the division to fill in for the team Astronomy Domini that had quit. The team originally featured mostly open level players with its owner, Flawless, being the exception. However, as the season progressed, Several roster changes took place in which said staff members, alongside Pepito, were added. To justify these roster changes, Flawless made a post on Vanilla Fortress's Discord explaining that the staff wanted to increase the skill level of the league by allowing higher tier players onto lower divisions. The resulting roster was quick to dispatch every other team in that division, granting Dead on no CU criteria, first place finish and the winning prize of 10 keys. Medals Although they served the obvious purpose of being delivered to those who got their respective positions at the end of the 6v6 tournament they have organized, there is clear evidence of the selling of these medals for Pepito's monetary profit, taking advantage of the TF2 developer's team's trust. By the lectures of the website Backpack.tf, there are 36 Vanilla Fortress 6v6 invite first place tournament medals. 33 of which are genuine quality, the rest being self-made, which are delivered as a third-party promotion. These statistics were taken at the time of recording this video, in December 14, 2021. However, when the article documenting the events was published over a year ago, there were only 17 in existence, 14 of which were genuine. Case 1. Rumia Rumi is an Argentinian ex-competitive player who has been found making transactions in pure keys with Pepito, at the same time receiving a genuine South American Vanilla Fortress 6v6 invite first place tournament medal. 
After Rumia found out he was being pointed about the situation, he allegedly deleted the medal immediately after. For clarification purposes, player Rumia was not rostered at any time in the team SE injected. Winners of the season 1 of the invite division, the true deservers of the medal. Proof of this can be found at the official Vanilla Fortress spreadsheet shown above. For reference, the link to the backpack TF function utilized for making of the following evidence will be posted as well. Comparing Rumia's backpack from April 9, 2019 to April 15, 2019, we can clearly see that there was a transaction that involved the removal of several Team Fortress 2 Manco keys and refined metal from his backpack. At the same time, he was receiving the supporter medal. Here is the extracted list, at the moment of the screenshots gathering of all the keys trade history shown in them. Notice how each and every one of them at least once get traded from Rumia's backpack to Pepito's backpack inside the time range analyzed in the backpack comparator? Comparing Rumia's backpack from April 5, 2019 to April 17, 2019, it is clear that in the section of obtained separately, there is a Vanilla Fortress first place medal. Case 2. Sandborn. The second case of an illegal medal distribution is related to the European competitive player Sandborn. As clearly visible in his backpack TF profile, as well as publicly in his team TF2 inventory, although not being rostered in the invite winning team, the player holds in his backpack another Vanilla Fortress invite first place tournament medal. The first registered appearance of the medal in his backpack was on June 8th. 2019. Case 3. Speedy. Known NAESCA invite and top UGC player Speedy has been seen with the same Vanilla Fortress invite first place medal in his backpack, although never rostered in any team of this league. Pepito has been rostered in a top RGL team, whose leader is Speedy. This leads us to believe that it has been a medal trade where Pepito would receive an RGL first place medal by being rostered in Speedy's RGL team and allegedly Speedy would receive a first place medal from Pepito's league in exchange, without being rostered but once again abusing the power the Team Fortress 2 team has given him. Hey, it's me Rain. I was able to get in touch with Speedy and he was able to tell me what happened, at least on his end. He thought he was doing a roster swap with Pepito to exchange medals, which is apparently a thing many people do in the US, at least. As in etf 12 you have to have played a match to be considered for a medal. Regardless, what Speedy told me is that when he was told a few shady things and suspected something was going wrong with Pepito, he unfriended him. In the end, he even suggested to delete the medal if this is what people wanted. While this doesn't mean he didn't do anything illegal, I choose to believe that it was just a simple metal swap that he intended rather than for Pepito to do illegal things. Case 4. Bani and Habib. In plain livestream, Bani as well as Habib, one of the world's best players, receive a Vanilla Fortress supporter medal when neither of them ever had any contact with the league whatsoever. Like Berryville, I mean, sure. Send me a link. What the fuck is this? South American Vanilla Fortress supporter? I've never heard of that event in my life. What? Why do I have this medal? I I I, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I guess someone just wanted to give me a medal. What the hell is this? What the fuck is this? Oh, South shit. American Ven- What? Something right here. Why am I getting this? And why are people speaking South American in my chat? Huh, something ain't adding up. Can I speak? I, dude, I... No hable, man. I don't, I don't even know if that's Spanish. It looks like Brazilian, if anything. But I, I don't know shit, but what the fuck is this? This is not an accusation against these players, but rather a funny and pretty clear demonstration of the free power of the Vanilla Fortress x staff possesses over the metal distribution. Case 5. Jackie Legs European top tier player was seen with the same medal. 
Unfortunately, no further information is provided in regards to this case. Hey, this is me from 2022 talking. So I got in touch with Jackie Legs. And what he told me is that he simply was asked if he wants a medal by a friend, which seems to be Pepito. And he said, yeah, sure. And that was that. And I completely believe him uh, because I probably would have done the same thing. I mean, surely he did not assume that it was something illegal, right? He didn't even know where it's going to come from. So, so I think it's safe to say that he didn't exactly do anything wrong. But of course, it's up for you to decide. Personal profit. The following screenshot proves Pepito's intentions to deliberately make a monetary profit for his personal interests without prior public agreement of the prize pool of his own league. In this screenshot, you can clearly see that Pepito is asking the player Anger to donate something worthy for the league's prize pool, which is obviously not true. Additional events. The following events aren't tied to a certain timeline, but represent a huge part of Pepito's actions throughout the community. Even though there is no record of concrete evidence of DDoS attacks separate from the ones Pepito has already been convicted for in the Brazilian Team Fortress 2 League days, all the evidence presented here leads us to believe that the DDoS attack happened in the following case, and due to the Pepito's history regarding that kind of attacks, we also believe that he, as well as his teammates, could have had some form of authority. For context, it's December 12, 2018. The UGC South American Season 28 Grand Finals. SXC injected playing Time Do Pepito. The maps being CP Process Final and CP Snakewater. The following audiovisual material, as well as the demos from one of the players, show on multiple occasions the connection dropping players from SXE, but not the players from Pepito's team. Particularly where Pepito dropped his Uber to a spy, Gordulian, he immediately gets timed out after the pick. Apart from this punctual episode, Pepito's declaration is related to DDoS and will be posted and further explained along with the proof against Flawless. Pepito competed in RGL Highlander Season 1 where he has been caught asking for a player of his RGL roster to use his account, admitting that he has already used the account of several other players to persuade him into accepting. In this screenshot you can see Pepito saying, Vortex, can I borrow your account to play in the NA tournament? We are going to get eliminated otherwise. I already used other sites, Hazy's, Flawless and Sniv's account. Pepito is extensively known for his racist manners, constantly attacking, harassing and discriminating players. Participants and members of Vanilla Fortress by their skin color, origins and many more reasons. The following screenshots with captions as context prove these accusations. Flawless Flawless is a Brazilian competitive player and a head administrator of Vanilla Fortress, the latest Brazilian TF2 league. He has been playing competitive Team Fortress 2 consistently since 2016. Flawless has a very extensive history of smurfing, cheating and account sharing, all of which began with his first FBTF league ban. In early 2017, after being accused and later convicted for being vagbanned in a smurf account. For it, he received a two year ban. Re incidents in Hapalaria. Sometime later, in mid late 2017, during the development of Hapalaria 6v6 Season 2, Gladiator Division, the staff received a complaint about the suspicious origins of the account Stokes who had been added to the roster Karinho das Indias without them knowing this actually was a smurf account. After some investigation by the staff, the true identity of Stokes was revealed and player Flawless was forced to confess to avoid worse punishment, 
than the one he was already going to get. Needless to say, playoffs got interrupted and Karin Hoda Sindia's matches were flawless played where deemed invalid. Here you can see the account in question. There is a video uploaded to YouTube from a Karin Hoda Sindia's match where supposedly, at the time, the head staff could recognize flawless voices through Stoke's mic. <laughs> And finally, here are some of the logs where the player Stokes had played several matches in Karinho Das Indias. Cheating Before further detailing the following case, we will prove the link between account Flawless and account Stokes through the usage of Lugui Analytics. The user interface of LA is embedded into a Discord private chat with the bot. A video has been recorded using the tool to perform searches that reveal several Smurf accounts Flawless owns, including the utilization of another player's account and his smurf as well. It is inserted first Flawless's Steam ID, which the bot then compares with an IP address and afterward unveils a list of all the Steam accounts that have been registered by the tool under the same IP address. The second parameter is the number of months the user wants the bot to trace back through. By default, the bot traces back for up to 12 months of activity, but if after the input steam ID the parameter 1, 2 or 6 is specified, the bot will show registered linkages between steam IDs and IP addresses that have occurred between the moment of query and 1, 2 or 6 months in the past, respectively. It is evident that the bot has encountered a link between those four accounts in the last 30 days which is the same IP address or the same person. Moving forward to the punctual case, November 11th, 2019. A Team VS Mix game in King of the Hill product was happening in the Brazilian server where Pepito was losing his match. Soon after starting the match, player Flawless joined as sniper, failed a couple of shots, went to spectate and let Speedy Force, a cheating account, play for him. After some time, Speedy Force gets kicked and Hills Retriever, another cheating account, join. Notice how it's the same account recorded in the Hapalaria Season 2 matches, which logs can be found here. Fortunately, there is a recorded demo by a spectator who suspected of both accounts. The significant ticks have been annotated for specific moments of this demo. It contains accounts Speedy Force and Hell's Retriever, which have been revealed to be Flawless's and Skizera's Smurf accounts, mutually shared to cheat anonymously in the analytics demonstration above. Here you can see the moments of cheating. Tick 71000 Speedy Force Aim Lock. Tick 106,000. Hell's Retriever joins. 116,000. Speedy Force gets kicked. Hell's Retriever plays. Tick 117,000. Hell's Retriever aim lock. Chat. Here you can see isolated instances that reveal Flawless's use of cheats have been recorded in the following album. Here is a rough translation of the event. If I would have cheated, it would have been in my main account. Yeah, sure. Wanna see? I'm going to cheat on my main account for you to see. This is a screenshot of Flawless's receipt for LMAO Box Premium, a notorious Team Fortress 2 cheating engine. DDoSing. The following screenshots prove a possible Flawless's involvement with acts of DDoSing. Death Threats A death threat has been recorded from Flawless against a Chilean player Nikolovis through the social platform WhatsApp, who he has also been harassing for quite some time since Nikolovis started questioning Vanilla Fortress's administration. To further enforce this case with the evidence, we will show you some pictures and the names to fully prove this indeed happened. Around Pepito's social circle and his behaviors, it's normal to joke around his friend's personal details over the internet, such as real-life pictures. Actually, here is a screenshot of Pepito's 
profile at the time of this writing, where he filled his profile with the face of another player. Here is a screenshot of the spreadsheet containing the season 1 open table, where a picture of Flawless has been posted. Now, here is a small album containing Flawless's Facebook profile. Notice his name and the connection between his online personality and his real-life self through the same picture found in the spreadsheet and his profile. Now, that hopefully a solid connection has been established, here is the evidence of the actual case. Conclusion after unwheeling and discovering these terrible events that took place, it is very apparent that the damage done by Papito and Flawless has not only impacted the South American TF2 community, but in fact, the entire Team Fortress 2 community. As of May 15, 2019, Valve has decided to stop giving out participatory and winning medals for non-official Team Fortress 2 events. This decision was taken just months after the illegal distribution of Vanilla Fortress medals occurred. Currently, Valve seems to have restored this and has started earning our trust again, as more and more medals make it into the game, however it is certainly a more difficult process that cannot be ruined again as it may be the very end of it once and for all. There are multiple things that may fix the unnecessary power provided to the event organizers, such as restricting the number of medals that may be distributed depending on the number of winning teams and participants prior to the event, ensuring that the medals can only be granted to players not later than a due date after the event has concluded. Nonetheless, hope sorry that this will never happen again. The document published by a small team of players ex-players and community administrators from Argentina and Brazil has proven to bring justice to the ones that deserve it. Hopefully, any other people that are anticipating similar events and would like to make them happen will take this as a strong blow and understand the risks involved, not only for themselves, but for the people of Team Fortress 2. Further details, as well as my script for the video and the document documenting this entire incident can be found in the description. I would really love to thank you all for watching this video, especially the ones that stuck till the end. It means a lot, and it took a long long time to create this video, so I would really appreciate if you click that subscribe button to see more content like this and encourage the development of further cases. And I'll see you around, goodbye.